Hey everyone, welcome to Every Nation Sunny Hill. My name is Sherry Dean and I'll be your host for today. I really hope that you enjoy today's service and really experience the presence, the power and the love of God. If you have a little one and would like your baby to be dedicated, we are having our baby dedications on the 6th of November. Please feel free to invite your friends and your family to the service to celebrate with you. We'll also be celebrating with you. It's almost the end of the year and there's a special event coming up soon. Can you guess what it is? It's Christmas guys. I'm super excited for this and um, I really hope that you are as well. To celebrate this, our church, um, specifically our kids ministry, is having the annual Christmas production taking place on the 27th of November. If you would like your kids to join and be a part of this event, they're more than welcome to join the Kiddies Church, which takes place during our normal church services, and um, there they'll be able to learn and practice for the play. If you'd like to lend a hand and help our kids ministry team prepare for this uh, production, you can chat to Bongi or any of the kids ministry teachers. They would also like to ask for your support. If you have any props that can be used as part of this Christmas production, please will you hand it over to one of the kids ministry teachers. Uh, you can also chat to Bongi. Um, as well as if you would like to make a financial donation, you can put um, the donation into the church account, just with referencing kids ministry. I hope you have a blessed and a fruitful week ahead. Goodbye. I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he took him by the right hand and raised him up. And immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. And leaping up, he stood up and began to walk and entered the temple with them, walking and leaping and praising God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God and recognized him as the one who sat day in, day out at the beautiful gate of the temple, asking for alms. And they were filled with wonder and amazement at what had happened to him. While he clung to Peter and John, all the people, utterly astounded, ran together to them in the portico called Solomon's. And when Peter and John, and when Peter saw it, he addressed the people, men of Israel, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us as though through our own power and godliness, uh, we made this man walk. The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered over and denied in the presence of Pilate when he had decided to release him. But you denied the holy and righteous one and asked for a murderer to be granted to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised up from the dead. This we are witnesses of, and his name, by faith in his name, this man, strong, whom you see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. Amen. What a powerful, powerful story. What a powerful picture of how God uses everyday believers to move in the authority that He's given us. But I want to start off by asking a question. The Bible says Peter and John were minding their own business. They were going to church. They were going to the temple. They were going for a prayer meeting. And as they were going to church for a prayer meeting... The Bible says that they happened upon a guy who was begging. But this guy was begging every day. It wasn't the first time they saw him. It wasn't the second time they saw him. He was a known beggar. Question. When is it a good time for a miracle? When is a good time for a miracle? Because... We know that a miracle is about to happen, but this guy 
was not a candidate. The Bible says that he was lame from... He had never known a day of walking around. He had never known a day of strength. He had never, never known. So here they're walking past this guy. And he's asking them for something practical. He's not even in an atmosphere of faith. There's no worship music playing. There's none of that happening. He's not busy trusting the Lord, reading his Bible. Did I get something wrong here? This guy is just looking for something practical. Now, when is it a good time for a miracle? Peter and John could have said, my man, you need some bread. Let, let, okay, hang on, hang on. Let's go to the spa. Just wait here. Just wait here. There's a spa around the corner, across the road. We'll go to the spa, get you a loaf of bread, sort you one time, my friend. Because all he was looking for was for something practical. Amen? They would have been good believers if they had just given him some money. Right? Would any of us have like looked down upon them and said, oh, bad apostles? No. None of us would have. We would have all commended them saying, yeah, they did the right thing. They helped this guy with what he asked for. But you see, in order to understand what transpires, you've got to understand that Peter and John were two people who spent time with Jesus. And you can only understand the events that transpire if you understand some of the conversations that they had with Jesus. Because the conversations that they have with Jesus change their paradigm of expectation. Why should you read your Bible? Because it's how you get to spend time with God and see the world as He sees it. To see possibility as He sees it. Not as we see it in the natural. So Peter and John had conversations with Jesus. So they look at this guy and they say, look at us. I like that. They say, look at us. So the guy's expectant. Yes, boss. Can I have something? And they say, silver and gold we don't have. I can imagine the guy's thinking, you're wasting my time. There are other people passing by who might stop and actually give me something. Silver and gold, we don't have. Silver and gold, we don't have. I wonder when you're engaging in the circumstances in your life, do you see the world the way that God does? In the book of Ephesians chapter 6, the Bible says that we don't wrestle against flesh and blood but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in heavenly places. There's a spiritual battle going on all around us. And it's important for our eyes to be open that we see the world as it really is and not just in the physical. You see, they could have gone into that situation and just said there's a physical need that needs to be met, and so let's just put some money here and move on. But they realize that beyond this physical need, beyond this physical situation, there's something else happening here. There's a spiritual reality. Folks, I pray that God lifts our eyes beyond the level of flesh and blood. You know, sometimes when we've got relational friction in the workplace, etc., we start to hate the people in the workplace. Right? We start to write the list of all their wrongs, right? So that we can pray for them. No. So that if there's a DC, we can like, you know, <laughs> we can like defend ourselves, right? There's more to this world than meets the eye. So, what do they do? They say... <laughs> Silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have. Now, 
This is like joining the book halfway through the story. Because remember, I told you that these two characters, Peter and John, they had had time with Jesus. And Jesus had told them that some stuff that we need to understand in order to understand what they said they had, right? So what did they have? What did they have? What did they have? Well, Peter puts it this way. In Luke chapter 10, verse 19, Jesus turned around to his disciples. In fact, um, if we go to Luke chapter 10, you can leave that slide there. If we go to Luke chapter 10, verse 1, Jesus starts off by telling the 12, where are we? Here. Luke chapter 9, verse 1, the previous chapter. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. And he called the 12 together and gave them power. Everyone say power. power. And authority. Help me, people. And gave them power and authority over all demons and to cure diseases. Now, this is important. This is important. Here the Bible says that he spoke to the 12. Peter and John, they're part of the 12. And he gave them what? Power and authority. Let's double click on those words in the Greek. The word power in the Greek is the word dunamos. It's like dynamite. It's the ability to do stuff. The word um, authority is the word exousia, which means the right to use the power. The right to use the power by virtue of status. By virtue of status. So, let's use the example of JMPD. Now, when you think about the Johannesburg Metro Police Department, they have serious power. Let's talk about their power. One, they've got a gun, right? That lives here. That's power. That's power. Not only do they have a gun, but they also have all the laws that back them up, right? And not only do they have a gun and the laws, but they also have the authority to enforce the law and to use their gun. They're authorized. And the reason that we recognize that they're authorized is because they have their uniform on, right? So these uniform people, they, they, they like pull us over, they can come into our workplace, and all of us, we sit to attention. Why? Because we recognize their authority. Okay. So here Jesus told them that I give you authority. I give you power and authority. Not just authority, I give you power and authority. And the Bible says that he sent them out to go and do it. To go and do what? Verse 2. And he sent them out to proclaim the kingdom of God and to heal. Wow. Now, I was watching a video, and uh, this preacher was talking about why we don't have authority. <laughs> and he said, it's wrong to say that believers have authority because Jesus only gave authority to the 12 apostles. Are you an apostle? Okay, let's explore that. Luke chapter 10. In Luke chapter 10, verse 1, the Bible says, And after this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them out ahead to the towns where he was about to come. He sent them out two by two. So here in Luke chapter 10, Jesus sends out not just the 12, another 70-odd people who were following him, random guys. He sends them. Now listen to this. In verse 19, they come back. Luke 10, verse 19. And they say this. In fact, let's start off verse 17. 
And the 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons subject in your name. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Who is he talking to? The 12? No, the 72. Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall hurt you. Hmm. Wow. You, you, you know, this is so fascinating for me because when we understand that Jesus has given us authority as a believer, it changes everything. Now, now if I took out my car keys and I said, guys, here, here, who, who, who wants to drive my wife's car? <laughs> who wants to drive my wife's car? Who, who, who? You know, and what am I doing? I'm giving you authority to drive her car, right? Now, if I told you that Jesus said he's given you the keys of the kingdom, whatever you bind on earth will be bound on earth. Whatever is loose, you loose in heaven will be loosed in heaven. Wow. He's giving you the keys. But what keys did he give you? You, you see, many of us think that we got the keys to the, to, the, to the Toyota Yaris in the kingdom. Right? Right? There are others who get keys that are written Rolls Royce on them and others that are given keys that are, have got Ferrari on them or a Maserati on them. Or, I don't know what your favorite car is, but you get the illustration? Some of us think that is reserved for some people, but God, if he's given me keys, he's given me a little key. He's given me a little authority. Uh-uh. There are no levels of authority. You either have it or you don't. Let me say that again. You either have it or you don't. So many of us get into situations where we see either sickness or any of the works of the devil, and we're already defeated because we don't believe that we have the authority. And so here, when Peter and John arrive in this situation, the first thing they say is, silver and gold we don't have, but what we do have. What did they have? They had authority. They had the right to use the power of God over everything demonic and to cure every disease. Now, I'm sure that the guy who was sitting there, he didn't even have time to say, but guys, you don't understand. I've been lame from birth. You don't understand. Every day, people have to bring me here by myself. You don't under, he, he didn't even have a chance to state his case. Because before he could get there, the rest of the story continues. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Are you still in Acts chapter 3? But Peter said, Silver and gold, verse 6, I have none, but what I have... I give to you in the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Nazareth. <laughs> Did I say Nazareth? Nazareth. Rise up and walk. You know, it's quite interesting that Peter and John didn't say, hang on, hang on, hang on, guys. Stop press. Bible author, wait a minute. We need a prayer meeting. Let's hold hands, everybody, and start to sing a song, set the atmosphere for miracles. And while we've got this atmosphere of miracles, let's start to pray in the Spirit. Oh, Korabashandar. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I feel the power. Oh, I, I, mm, mm, mm. Isn't it amazing how we've got so many unbiblical practices when it comes to prayer. And I'm also very interested that they, they didn't pray for this guy by saying, oh, Father God, we're asking that you would, oh, Jesus, 
Oh, why don't you heal this Paul Jesus? Sweet Jesus. You know, because it has to be in a song as well, right? <laughs> won't you come and heal this man? That, they didn't pray that. They didn't pray that. It, it, it's, like, it's like having the car keys that you've been given to drive the car, and now you want to go to the shops, and you keep going to the person who gave you the car keys to go to the shop to say, can I drive the car? Please, please, can, please, is it okay? Do, do you mind if we... I know we ask for a lot, but, you know, the car, can I... Are you sure... You, you don't need to let me use the car. I know you gave me the keys, but you know you don't need to let me use the car today. If it's your will for me to drive the car, then, then you'll let me drive the car. So please give me a sign that I can drive the car. So they pray very differently to us because they knew what they had. They knew that they'd been given the right to use the power. They hadn't just been given the power, they'd been given the right to use the power. So they say, and I want to underline this here, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. That's all they said. That's all they said. And then it says, verse 7, And he took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles were made strong. Now, you know, I know many of us are educated, have got degrees, even multiple degrees, people here with PhDs. It's amazing. You're so well educated. It's amazing. And we like to get to the scripture and become analytical. And we look at this and we say, okay, okay, but what's the formula? It can't be that simple. What, what else happened here? Surely there's something else. There's like, you know, was it a time thing? Was it a, we try to over, overanalyze the scripture. But what he said was, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Why did he say those words, rise up and walk? I believe it's because the person couldn't rise up and walk. <laughs> and he took him by the right hand. I've told the story before, and um, some of you met my friend Victor was here. One of our university day holidays stories. Sunday Lee invited us to go to minister to his friends and family during the vacation. I got to preach the gospel and some neighbors and friends in the neighborhood got saved in the connect group. It was amazing. I think about somewhere around um, 12 or 13 people gave their lives to the Lord that day. It was awesome. And um, there was a lady there who was part of this group of people that I was sharing the gospel with, and she was paralyzed from a stroke, and she couldn't use half her body. You know, the one eye was like bobbing around, and the arm wasn't working, the leg wasn't working. And while I was preaching the gospel, I, I realized that I need to pray for this lady, but then guess, guess what, guys, can I confess something? I'm just like you. <laughs> I got scared. I got scared. I was like, but, but this is such a glorious moment. I don't want to ruin it. <laughs> I mean, people have just given their lives to the Lord. Imagine we pray for this person and it doesn't happen. I mean, like, their faith will be wrecked, you know what I mean? <laughs> so I go back home. And while, I, while I'm home, the Holy Spirit gets all over me like a rash. And I'm like, oh, Lord, okay, you want me to go back, pray for this lady? So I'm like, what do I do? We pray, we fast. 
I call my friends. Who can come? And to be honest, I called my friends, Victor, Sunday, and I said, guys, come along. Because I knew that if, if we prayed and nothing happened, then I could always share the blame. <laughs> it, wasn't, <laughs> it wasn't just my faith. It was like, ah, oh, guys, ah, oh, you know, well, it's not just me who doesn't have power. Ah, you guys, all of us you don't have. <laughs> True story. So we pray, we fast, we get ready to go. We, we go to this lady's house. And um, this is a couple of days after we prayed for them to get saved. And while we're busy praying, and I, guys, I mean, this was bad prayer. Not the prayer that I'm trying to teach you this morning. This was bad prayer. I mean, we prayed everything we knew in the Bible, from Genesis, Exodus, I mean, all the way to Revelation. We were sweating. <laughs> and nothing was happening. Then eventually someone remembered that in the Bible it says, anoint the sick with oil. So we're like, great, we need to anoint you with oil. Now there's a problem. Which oil do we anoint her with? (laughs) The Bible doesn't say which oil. So we're like, olive oil, oil from Jerusalem. I mean, like, what? Is there a special oil? Is it the one with, like, all those flavors and and perfumes and, and essential oils mixed in it? Which? Maybe we don't have the oil. So friend goes in to the kitchen, finds olive oil, and zim, it's olive vine. So it's olive oil. It's not really olive oil, okay? Just <laughs> vegetable oil. <laughs> and and we, we now need to anoint the lady with the oil, and we don't know. Do we, how do you anoint someone with the oil? It doesn't say. Do you pour oil on them? Do you put a dot do you put a cross? Do you, I mean, like, what? It doesn't say. Is that where do you put the oil when you anoint them? On the head? On the cheek? Where? I mean, this is a crisis now because we have to look spiritual while trying to figure this all out. <laughs> so we're busy praying. Shandai, call up a shandai, la 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 la. We're, we're gunning for it. So then, my friend. Since he's not here this morning, I won't mention which one. <laughs> but so he puts the sign of the cross, the oil in the sign of the cross on the lady. So we're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We all approve. That's, that's the way. <laughs> we pray, pray, pray. Still no change. Still no change. I got a word of knowledge about unforgiveness in her life. I say to her, um, do you have anyone you need to forgive? Immediately she said, yes, my father. There was an older lady almost in her 70s. Yeah, almost in her 70s. (laughs) And there was light, amen. (laughs) And so this older lady says, I need to forgive my father. She prays with weeping to forgive her father. Now we have finished. All our prayers, all our prophetic energy is gone. This is nothing, we, we haven't felt the glory, we haven't seen the cloud, nothing is happening. So in exasperation, I remember somewhere I read that asked them to do what they couldn't do before. So I say to the lady, I say, okay, do something you couldn't do before. So she raises her hand. And I said, no, no, something you couldn't do before. Then she said, yeah, I couldn't raise my hand. Now the spirit of suspicion was upon me. <laughs> I was like, I, I, haven't felt the, I haven't felt the presence here. I haven't felt, have you guys discerned any? No, 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 no. Yeah, surely we would have heard something. We would have like, you know. And then, um, so okay, do something else you couldn't do before. She raises her right leg. Totally healed. You know, I know you guys are laughing at me because I didn't know what I was doing. But it's okay. Peter and John, I'm sure, didn't look very professional. Have a look here in Acts chapter 4. I want to prove it to you. Over, the, over the, the next chapter. So they get into trouble because of this healing. The Sanhedrin brings them in. They imprison them. And they start to interrogate them. And they're saying, don't use the name of Jesus. Whatever you do. And so they say, but salvation is only found in the name of Jesus. There's only hope in the name of Jesus. So we're not going to stop. 
So now the, the, the theologians and the Sanhedrin are observing Peter and John. And watch what they say in verse 13. Now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished and they recognized that they had been with Jesus. You know, that word uneducated is the Greek word idiotos. True story. Look it up. Idiotos. That is the Greek word there. True story. I'm not making this up. And idiotos means one who is unlearned. So when they looked at them, they were like, ah, come on, guys, these guys, come on, come on. Do you think they're going to amount to anything? Do you honestly think these guys? Okay, maybe they've been with this Jesus guy, but ah. There's nothing about them. Why is that? Because like the JMPD, even though they had the authority, remember JMPD, they wear their nice garments? They were actually in plain clothes. They were in plain clothes. They were pl plain clothes police officers that day. So they couldn't tell that actually these people had been authorized. And when we look at each other, we might say like, there's nothing on the outside that gives you any ability to do anything. But there's something so powerful that God has given you that you have the authority to walk in. Amen. Amen. So when we pray for people, how do we pray? Three things. Number one, you pray in the name of Jesus. Number two, I know you guys want something more complicated. I don't have anything <laughs> more complicated for you. Number one, you pray in the name of Jesus. Number two, when you pray, you command. You command. They said, rise up and walk. <laughs> now, I'm sure the guy, if he was one of us, would have sat there going, ha, ah, how insulting. Do you know I've never walked? How can you just come? Who do you think you are? Just come here to my house and tell me to rise up. And how dare you? And number three, Ask them to do what they couldn't do before. Now, Timber, I've tried that, and it didn't work. What do I do? I'm glad you asked. Repeat. Repeat. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Repeat. A very different way of praying. Amen. In verse 16, they said, after all the commotion of the healing in chapter 3. In verse 16, uh, before we get to verse 16, there's something very important. I have to mention this. So everyone's now excited. This, this guy is walking around. The miracles happen. People, there's a, there's a maze. There's a buzz going on. And when verse 12, chapter 3, verse 12, my favorite verse in this passage. And this is what the Bible says. When Peter saw this, he addressed the people, the crowd that was gathered. And he said to them, why do you wonder at this? And why do you stare at us? As though it was by our own power or piety, we made him walk. It's not by our own power or godliness that this person is walking. Many of us have got a barometer of spirituality, right? I've been to church for three weeks in a row. Hey, I'm, I'm spiritually strong now. I haven't been to church for a couple of weeks. Hey, I'm weak as a Christian, right? That's how many of us function. I remember the first time I saw a demon manifest, and my first response was, I haven't had a cry time today. Oh, I'm serious. I was clueless. The Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge. I was clueless. I thought 
that I had to be feeling the woozies in order to move in authority and cast out a demon. I didn't understand that. No, 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 no. I've been given authority. It's not dependent on my quiet time. Why do you think this man is well? It's not by our own power or godliness that we made him walk. Why do I want to say not by our own power? Because the power we use is the power of God. It's his power. And we've got authority. He gives us a right to use his power. Who gets the right to use his power? Children of God. Children of God. John 1 verse 12 puts it this way. It says, To all who received Jesus, He gave the right, that word there is exousia. He gave the authority to become children of God. If you've received Jesus Christ, you have that authority. Who's received Jesus? Who's received authority? Hey, some of you, uh, 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 some of you need to watch this message again. (laughs) If you're a child of God, you have the authority. The question is, what does this, what what car do the keys drive? Right? We're going to get there in a moment. I want to talk about the name of Jesus. Because in verse 16, he says this. And his name... By faith in his name, the name of Jesus, he made this man strong whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given this man his perfect health in the presence of you all. Faith in the name of Jesus and faith that is through Jesus. Faith in the name of Jesus and faith that is through Jesus. Did you guys get that? Let's rewind. When Jesus died on the cross, the Bible tells us in Colossians chapter 2 that he triumphed over principalities' powers. All the power of the devil, he triumphed over it. Matthew 28, 18, 19, 20, Jesus says, All authority in heaven and earth has been given to me, therefore go. Right? So Jesus has all authority. Why? Because he triumphed over the devil who keeps people in captive in the world. But Jesus beat him up, but people are still in captivity. So Jesus says, go and free these people who are in captivity. How do we free those who are in captivity? This is what we are authorized to do. Okay? Mark chapter 16. I want to give you an understanding of your authority in Christ. Verse 15. Are you ready? Mark 16, verse 15. So what it says. Go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the whole creation. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. But whoever does not believe will be condemned. There are consequences to rejecting Jesus. Verse 17. And these signs will accompany, or another version says, will follow those who believe. They will cast out demons. Is that what it says? It says, in my name. Now, this in my name thing is a very interesting phrase. In my name. In my name. Now, have you ever been sent on an errand by your parents? And you are told that, go and tell them that I am asking. Hey? That's what it means to be sent in a person's name. And in exactly the same way, when that police officer says stop, he is not standing in his name as, you know, Officer Mabena. Um, <laughs> there's nothing wrong with the name Mabena. <laughs> He's standing there in the name of JMPD. The whole municipal government is behind him. 
So when we come in the name of Jesus, we're stating in whose name, in whose authority we're standing in. We're not standing in our own authority. We're standing in the authority of someone greater. So when we pray in the name of Jesus, we're standing in what Jesus has done. He died on the cross. We didn't. He triumphed over the devil. We didn't. So he says, in my name, you will cast out demons. Next time you come across a demon, try and say, in the name and use your name. In the name of Temba, come out. Yeah, it's not going to go well with you. <laughs> but say, in the name of Jesus, come out. There is authority. There's authority. It says, in my name, cast out demons. That's what you're authorized to do. What else are you authorized to do? Speak. They will speak in new tongues. They'll pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will, hurt, it will not hurt them. <laughs> they will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. So we are authorized, number one, to cast out demons. Number two, we are authorized to heal the sick. Number three, when it's talking about serpents and poison, it's talking about the elements that can harm us. Natural elements or even devices and schemes of people poison to kill us. That we have authority over those things. Amen. Don't go now looking for snakes to pick up and say, we will visit you in hospital. So these are the things that we're authorized to do. I like the list that he uses in, in Luke. Jesus says, I'm authorizing you to heal the sick, cleanse lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Now, when we think about raising the dead, we say that it is impossible, right? Come on. But let me ask you a question. How much more possible is it to cast out a demon? How much more possible is it to heal the sick? How much more possible is it to do anything he's asked us to do? It's all impossible unless we do it in his name. Amen? Faith in the name of Jesus has made this man well. Hmm. Thank you, Lord, that there's power in your name. John chapter 14, verse 12 and 14. What are we authorized to do? Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do. And greater works than these will he do. Because I'm going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. What are we authorized to do? Whatever will glorify God, we are authorized to do. <laughs> Whatever will glorify God, we're authorized to do. Amen? I like the fact Jesus says, whatever you see me doing. So read through Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Look at those biographical sketches of the life of Jesus. See what Jesus does and know that he has authorized you to do the same thing. Did Jesus multiply food? He did. You are authorized to do that. Did Jesus dot, dot, dot? You are authorized to do that. And not only that, but he says, and greater works. And greater works than this. I remember when I was, um, I'd been diagnosed with asthma. I was trying to remember what it's called. It's been so long. So when I, was, uh, when I was about 13 years old, I got diagnosed with asthma. And um, it came out of blue. And, uh, you know, interesting. I was having a conversation. True story. I was having a conversation with a guy at school. 
who had asthma. And he told me that he struggles with asthma. And I remember listening to him and thinking, wow, he struggles with asthma. This is really bad. This is really, really bad. And then I remember leaving that conversation going, sure, I hope I don't struggle with asthma. Fast forward a few months, I had asthma. It's interesting, sometimes we forget that demonic spirits like to transfer into our lives and it starts as a thought. And I remember going through this whole battle with asthma um, in my fifth year of high school. Uh, I got healed. Praise God. And I got healed at a charismatic meeting. I didn't have faith for it. Um, my family had tried all sorts of things. We'd gone to San Gomez. We'd gone to, I wasn't a believer then, okay? And we'd gone to all these things trying to get healed, trying to get better. And everything failed. My dad was a medical doctor. It failed. Many went to the best doctors. Failed. Had my two pumps, sophilics, and all this. I had the stuff. Asthma, bad. I'm in this meeting. There's a young preacher screeching from the front. Mute, praise and worship, awful. He says, if anyone needs healing, come to the front. I said, well, I've got nothing better to do. Come to the front. Prayed for. And I'm like, ooh, something feels a bit weird. But anyway... From that day forward, I didn't struggle with asthma. I was healed. Started running again, playing sports again. It was fantastic. Praise God. I get to varsity. My second year of varsity, I recommit my life to the Lord. Yeah, there was a delta in between. <laughs> I recommit my life to the Lord. And then I start to struggle with asthma again. And it would often happen at night the symptoms would start to come, the constriction of my chest, the breath, and all those horrible signs of asthma. And, and, and it will happen again and again and again until someone said to me, you need to rebuke it in the name of Jesus. And I said, you know, I'd never thought about doing that. And so the next time, middle of the night, all these symptoms started to come, I'd get up, I'd say, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke you. I've been healed in Jesus' name. And there'll be a little bit of relief. Then I'll continue to stand my ground on the word of God. Stand my ground on the fact that Jesus had healed me. And over the process of a few minutes, the symptoms would go. And then I started to learn that authority is actually something we need to apply in our lives and we need to release through our lips the enemy will always come to test whether you know your authority or not. In your workplace, in your family, in your relationship, he will always come to test if you know your authority or not. James 4 verse 7. I don't know how many believers in the middle of the night, they feel like either um, uh, something trying to strangle them or even worse, other demonic pain or violations that take place. What should you do? This is what the Bible says you should do. Number one, submit to God. Number two, resist the devil. And the Bible says he'll flee. Many believers never take the time to resist the devil. They never resist him. They're like, oh, this is terrible, this is horrible. Do you know what's happening in my life? This is bad. And they'll tell you long sob stories, but they never rise up and say, in the name of Jesus, you will not. And it's time for us as the people of God to start to resist the devil and all his works. When Jesus went around doing good and healing all those who were oppressed by the devil, sickness is oppression by the devil. It's never a gift from God. Never. never. And so we contend, we fight, we battle over and over and over again because we know victory is ours in Jesus' name. Yeah. Amen? And I know some of you have had long-term sicknesses. I want to close with this. 
This man had been born lame. And sometimes he was even outside the very gates of a church. He was at the temple gates. He was probably hearing the word that was spoken. He was most probably uh, exposed to the, the messages that were being preached there. But all the while he sat. Year on year, year on year. And I don't know why sometimes it seems to be a struggle to get to healing. I don't know. But what I do know is that every time, what we are called to do remains the same. We're called to stand in authority because we know that we have been authorized to stand in that place. Sometimes we stand in authority, we pray once, and it happens. Sometimes we pray and stand and stand and stand, then the breakthrough comes. And sometimes we stand and stand and stand and stand and stand, and it seems nothing is happening. And I want to encourage you, don't give up. Stand all the more. In Ephesians 6, it says, After having done all you can do, therefore, stand. Stand. Don't put down your authority. Don't accept it. Don't say, I'll take this on myself. It's okay. It's my lot in life. It's not your lot in life. God didn't create you like that. He didn't create you for that. Believe again. Amen. Folks, this morning, I'd like to end off by praying. And the first thing I want to pray is for you today to receive your authority. It's already been given to you by Jesus, but you to actually take time and say, Jesus, today I receive the authority you've given me. It's time. It's time to stand in what Jesus has given us as the church. You know, the problem with um, some of these crazy churches that are running around is that people don't believe that they've got authority, so they believe only one man one prophet, one evangelist, one apostle can do the stuff for them. That's a lie. It's not in the name of the prophet. It's not in the name of the apostle. It's not even in the name of a church. It's not in, even in the name of the church. It is in the name of Jesus. <laughs> it is faith in the name of Jesus that makes people well. So today, are you ready to receive your authority? Are you ready to say, Jesus, thank you? And then we're going to do a second thing. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for any and all sicknesses, diseases, things here. Amen. Because we're not just going to receive. We're going to receive and do. And we're going to trust God for the miraculous. And if you believe that you've received then you need to do. That's the evidence of saying you have received, such as I have. It's because we know that we've received, that we do. And today's the day that you step out of the shadows. The enemy does not have authority to mess up your family, to mess up your marriage, to mess up your workplace, to give you sickness, to beat you up all the time to violate your peace. He has no authority. It's time for us to rise up, church. Amen? Amen. So please stand with me. And I want you to raise your hands. And we're going to pray this prayer together. Jesus, you said... All authority in heaven and earth has been given to you. Therefore, go. Jesus, I receive my authority from you to do what you have called me to do. To heal the sick. To cast out demons. To raise the dead. To cleanse lepers. I receive, I receive my authority in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. I, thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, 
that when I pray, that when I pray you, are you are backing up my words. Not because I'm so godly, because I'm so godly. but because I'm your child. Because I've received you. You have authorized me to use your authority. And today, I repent from every lie that I've believed. That I'm powerless. That others can do it. Because now, Jesus, it's my time to rise up in everything you have called me to do so that you may be glorified. Be glorified, Jesus, in my life, in my work, in my family, in my relationships, in my body. Be glorified. May your will be done in Jesus' name. One more thing, one more thing, one more thing. Jesus, give me boldness to walk in this authority. Guys, I don't know how to do this, but I want to follow what the Lord is leading. Is that okay? If you need healing for anything, doesn't matter how long you've had it doesn't matter how you got it doesn't if you need healing for anything just raise your hand where you are just raise your hand where you are and I'm going to ask the people around you to go and start to pray for you is that okay you've been authorized by Jesus so can I ask those who are around them to please go and pray for those whose hands are up. Just go gather around them. Just go gather around them. Look around you. Who's got a hand up? Go and lay hands on them. The Bible says lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I want you to lay hands. The Bible says lay hands, lay hands. Father God, I thank you for your presence here. Now I want to ask you to follow these instructions. Number one, I want you to ask them, what can you pray for? Okay? Now if it's, if it's something personal and, and they're a bit embarrassed to say, then it's okay. Just if you're embarrassed to say what it is just say like you're just embarrassed but you really need God to come through for you that's okay God can work with that okay but if they're comfortable just ask them well, what's wrong okay ask that question this is it you're being equipped right now to pray for the sick okay that's it you don't need to be a doctor and understand it just get an idea of what's wrong Okay? Here's the next thing that I want you to do. You're going to pray. I'll give those people a moment to explain. You're going to... Here's the second thing you're going to do. You've asked... What's wrong? Two, you're going to say, right, now I'm going to pray and command. And this is what you're going to pray. You're going to pray in the name of Jesus. And then you're going to pray the opposite of what they've got. Right? Rise up and walk was the opposite of this man who was lame and couldn't walk. So you want to command in the name of Jesus the opposite of that condition. The opposite of that situation. Okay? And then after that, you're going to ask them to do what they couldn't do before. Go ahead. Thank you, Lord.
Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Command this name. The body be restored. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Ask them to do what they couldn't do before. Ask them to do what they couldn't do before. Amen. A good thing's happening there. A good thing's happening there. Amen. Come on. Come on, come on. Amen, amen. More, Lord. And if they aren't better yet, pray again. Pray again. Jesus was praying for a guy who was blind. And he said, what do you see? And the guy said, I see trees that look like people walking. And then he prayed for the guy again. And the guy was healed. Never, never be shy to pray again. Amen. Go ahead. Pray again. Pray again. Thank you, Lord. Strength. Wholeness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, rebuke every spirit of infirmity. We command you to go right now in Jesus' name. Often when Jesus prayed for the sick, He would address a demonic spirit and say, Spirit of sickness, go. And you might want to pray that right now over the person. And say, any demonic spirit, I command you to leave right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Release your presence right now in this place. Freedom. Healing. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, church. Now, I want to know what happened. Who feels better from the prayer? I want to see some hands raised. Who? Okay, we got someone there. One. Who else? Two. Amen. Three. Amen. Who feels better after prayer? Four. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Great point. My wife said that um, (laughs) some people might be feeling not fully recovered, but they're feeling a slight improvement. Who's feeling a slight improvement in their bodies? Okay, more people's hands are coming up. Now, Now, what do you do when there's a slight improvement? You press repeat. Amen. We press repeat, and we press repeat until, until, amen. Church, we're going to end the service here. If you need prayer for anything, please come forward to the front. We'd love to pray with you. We've got a great prayer team. We're going to pray in the precious name of Jesus, amen. And God does miracles and wonders. God bless you. Have a great week. Um, In two weeks' time, we start a new series called Confessions. How God's grace met my mess. You don't want to miss it. Um, so that's not next week. The following week we start that. Invite your friends. Uh, we'll get more chairs, etc. Uh, it's going to be fantastic. Um, next week, uh, Pastor Jude is going to be ministering. And um, guys, have a fantastic week. Come forward for prayer. We want to pray for you. Amen.